Exile's Letter by Ezra Pound Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake July 17, 2006 In Long Branch, New Jersey PaintedRiceCakes.org From the Chinese of Li Po Usually considered the greatest poet of China Written by him while in exile about 760 A.D. To the hereditary war counselor of Sho, recollecting former companionship. So kin of Raku Ho, ancient friend, I now remember that you built me a special tavern by the south side of the bridge at Ten Shin. With yellow gold and white jewels, we paid for the songs and laughter, and we were drunk for month after month, forgetting the kings and princes. Intelligent men came drifting in from the sea and from the west border, and with them, and with you especially, there was nothing at cross-purpose. And they made nothing of sea-crossing or mountain-crossing. If only they could be of that fellowship. And we all spoke out our hearts and minds, and without regret. And then I was sent off to South Way, smothered in laurel groves and you to the north of Raku Hoku, till we had nothing but thoughts and memories between us. And when separation had come to its worst, we met and traveled together into Sengo, through all the thirty-six folds of the turning and twisting waters, into a valley of a thousand bright flowers. That was the first valley and on into ten thousand valleys full of voices and pine winds, with silver harness and reins of gold prostrating themselves on the ground, out came the east of Khan foreman and his company, and there came also the true man of Shi Yo to meet me, playing on a jeweled mouth organ. In the storied houses of San Ko they gave us more Senen music many instruments like the sound of young phoenix broods and the foreman of kang chu drunk danced because his long sleeves wouldn't keep still with the music playing and i wrapped in brocade went to sleep with my head on his lap and my spirit so high that it was all over the heavens and before the end of the day we were scattered like stars or rain I had to be off to sow, far away over the waters, you back to your river bridge, and your father, who was brave as a leopard, was governor of Hei Shu, and put down the barbarian rabble. And one May he had you send for me, despite the long distance, and what with broken wheels and so on, I wouldn't say it wasn't hard going, over roads twisted like sheep's guts, and I was still going late in the year in the cutting wind from the north, and thinking how little you cared for the cost, and you caring enough to pay it. Then what a reception! Red jade cups, foods well set on a blue jeweled table, and I was drunk and had no thought of returning, and you would walk out with me to the western corner of the castle, to the dynastic temple, with the water about it clear as blue jade, with boats floating, and the sound of mouth organs and drums, with ripples like dragon scales going grass green on the water, pleasure lasting, with courtesans going and coming without hindrance, with the willow flakes falling like snow, and the vermilion girls getting drunk about sunset, and the waters a hundred feet deep reflecting green eyebrows. Eyebrows painted green are a fine sight in young moonlight, gracefully painted, and the girls singing back at each other, dancing in transparent brocade, and the wind lifting the song and interrupting it, tossing it up under the clouds. And all this comes to an end, and it is not again to be met with. I went up to the court for examination, tried La Yu's luck, offered the Cho Yu song, and got no promotion, and went back to the East Mountain, white-headed. And once again we met, later, at the South Bridge Head, and then the crowd broke up, 
you went north to San Palace, and if you ask how I regretted the parting, it is like the flowers falling on spring's edge, confused, whirled in a tangle. What's the use of talking? And there is no end of talking. There is no end of things in the heart. I call in the boy, have him sit on my knees to write and seal this, and I send it a thousand miles, thinking. Translated by Ezra Pound from the notes of the late Fennel Rosa and the decipherings of the professors Mori and Araga. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.